Hey, hey, it's Kayla. I'm gonna do a hot mess June, July wrap up thing. Okay, I'm doing Tecate and beer salt. Y'all up north don't know what you're missing. They don't have this in Montana, I don't know. I guess I can't speak for the whole entirety of the northern United States. Okay, so what I've been reading this summer, normally I like to talk about what I read in order of how I read them, like chronologically, it's just how I like to do things. But since I read a ton of comics over the summer, when I get to the comics, I'm just gonna talk about the series or the comics in general. Um, so obviously that's not all gonna be in order. Anyways, let's go. So. June, I started reading The Wicked and the Divine by Kieran Gillen, Jamie McKelvey, and other artists. So I read book one and book two, and then I read volumes five and six. So I like the series. It definitely picks up towards the end, like volume six was just like fucking insane. Like that's when like the plot finally develops. So this is the fantasy comic series about the different pantheon of gods return to earth every 90 years, I can't remember. And they take over the body of a human and then they like sing music and they bring joy and stuff happens. So I've read everything. I read all the volumes that are out. I haven't read the one shots and I haven't read the single issues. That are out. I really want to, but I think at this time I'm just gonna wait until volume seven comes out. But I'm really excited because let me tell you guys, volume six, like if you've read Wicked the Divine and you kind of thought it was meh, I mean it's up to you if you want to keep going. But it does pick up, like the plot gets really good. And like it was so tempting just to buy the single issues to find out what happens after volume six. So after that, I read my first Karen Slaughter book which was The Good Daughter. I listened to this on audiobook and I gave it four stars. Okay, The Good Daughter. I thought it was really good. Like it starts off like insanely fast paced. It's like a thriller, thriller mystery, very thrilling, very gory, very dark. Uh, it's about this horrible thing happens to this family and it's just the aftermath. Like I, I, I if you want to know what it's about, go to Goodreads and check it out. I recommend just going in blind. Uh, the first few chapters, like, it's just intense action right from the beginning. And the rest of the book is still very twisty and turny and action-packed. But it's not as action-packed as the beginning. So, I don't know. And I guess I was just kind of conflicted with reveals. Whatever the case, I gave it a four. And I still stand by that. There is just something, I think I just kind of put Karen Slaughter on a high pedestal, I don't know, but I'm excited to read anything else from her and it was a really good thriller if you're looking for a thriller. Okay, and then I read To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cristo. I gave this one four stars. Um, I think I did this one like, did I listen to it? I think I read this one in an ebook and a physical book. I don't think I did audio. Um, this one was okay. Um, looking back, it might feel more like a three star. Um, I rate a lot based on enjoyment. Uh, this is the piratey YA that's supposed to be dark, but it really wasn't that dark. It's like about the siren. Like it's the Little Mermaid dark retelling thing and the sirens hunt princes and the print this and this print hunts sirens and they obviously get together and things happen but it was good for what it is um it was just too too lovey-dovey for me and it wasn't dark enough for me um but i mean i get why people really dig it then i read um so I read a couple of short web comics from Emily Carroll and these, you guys, Emily Carroll is so amazing. So she, and I also read from her, I might as well just talk about it now. 
out. She also did Through the Woods, which is like a bind up of some of her short comics. I know, I haven't read all of her online comics, but I know one of them is in both the book and online. You can go to her website, you can re read her web comics for free. Um, what's cool about reading them online is that like you click through them and like the entire screen is black and then you have like their artwork which just like pops out like it's not in a panel it's just there and then at least in the two comics that I read the last panel um, you read the panel and then you scroll down and there's like a visual that goes down as you're scrolling down and then it ends with like the reveal at the bottom of the scroll down so it's kind of like an interactive experience, sort of, and it just added to like the eeriness of these comics. So the two web comics I read was His Face All Red and The Prince and the Sea. Uh, so good. His Face All Red does appear in Into the Woods, Through the Woods. Uh, Through the Woods was so good. I gave it five stars. Um, it's just my kind of vibe. I like dark. I like creepy. Her artwork is just fantastic. The lettering is even more fantastic like it's just so creepy and plays so well to the story like I don't know with comics like visuals are just as important as the story and sometimes it can go one way or the other and this one it just felt like the perfect marriage for a horror comic and I love her like I'm so glad I discovered her I didn't realize it was the same person that did Through the Woods um, online, I will read all of her things. I'm kind of like taking my time with her so I don't just like read everything and then have to wait patiently for her to come up with something else. But definitely one of my favorite new authors of the year. Uh, love everything that I've read from her so far. Okay, so another novel I read was Nimmer Night by Jay Kristoff. I listened to this on audiobook. I gave it five stars. It was amazing. The beginning was kind of like just like with most fantastical audiobooks it's kind of hard to like figure out what's going on but once you do insanely original very dark very just all the things I want <laughs> like this is the one where it's like assassin -y, like it's about assassins and magic uh, there's like some kind of political family thing going on in town don't really that's kind of just subtly brewing Okay, and now we are to Lock and Key, <laughs> uh, by, written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez. Oh my god, you guys, Lock and Key is so fucking good. Okay, so this is a horror comic, if you haven't heard of it, it's a big staple, it's a big, like, it's a big deal in the comic community. Uh, there's six volumes out. I don't love with the artwork, the only thing my thing was was that just all the, all the kind of like characters look the same, like all the faces look similar like there's certain characters that in the beginning you weren't quite sure who was who at least for me but regardless amazing series hands down favorite favorite comic series which I have a lot but Lock and Key is so good and it is it did get the green light to be a Netflix show which I think is going to play so well um, on TV I'm pretty sure it's going to be live action uh, it is fantastical, Lock and Key, in case you don't know. Um, it's a horror comic. The, uh, this family, they move back to this uh, old mansion that's, in, that's been in their family for decades after a tragic event that happens in the first issue. And there's these keys hidden around the house and each key does something fantastical and it's just about this family dealing with what happened to their family in the beginning and what the keys are doing and there's also this villain that's lingering around that has their own agenda and it's it's great you should definitely try out the first volume um see if you like it um there is like an audiobook out i haven't heard the best things but definitely check out the comics and maybe the netflix show whenever that comes out um next i read the lucky ones by tiffany wrights this was a uh, Deadly Divas uh, pick. I listened to this on audiobook, I'm pretty sure. Um, I guess one three stars. It was okay. Uh, this is about this girl with a tragic past, and she basically was raised kind of Annie style by this rich 
man in this big mansion and when she was younger she got pushed down the stairs by someone she like they never knew what happened and she got taken away and never have seen these people again and somehow she finds her way back at this mansion years and years later and it's basically just her trying to figure out or trying to remember what happened when she was younger. I mean, it's okay, it's good, it's not bad, but I don't know. That's how thrillers are, you either take them or, it was pretty good, it wasn't horrible. Um, more comics than I read, Before the Devil Breaks You by Lava Bray, listen to this on audiobook, this is book three in The Diviners. I like this one bet. I mean, the books get better and better. This one for me felt more like the whole story arc for the series was finally getting going because the first two books kind of had each their own little thing going on and they kind of hinted at a overall series arc and this one finally you get the series arc but it also kind of feels like two books in one like the first half of the book felt like a book and then the second half of the book just felt like like people were just kind of hang like you know hanging out and they're kind of, it's kind of the aftermath of the big thing that happens. And then it kind of leads up to another thing. I don't know. It was just kind of this. And it's a really big book. I mean, it could have easily been two books. I guess that was kind of the idea is to maybe condense them. I don't know. But it's very good. It's the paranormal, fantastical, historical fiction that's set in the 20s where there's diviners, people that have magical abilities. And there's lots of things like seriously there's so many characters and there's so many plots in this series also everyone always says that it, it like it's gonna break your heart didn't break my heart um, I was expecting to and it didn't I kind of see I mean I see why some people are heartbroken I guess but me and then I dove into paper girls by Brian K Vaughn um, I reread volumes one through three and then picked up volume four. Again, so good. This one gets better and better each volume once you start tying the threads together. This one's very sci fi, time travel y. And so <laughs> those are kind of hard to do in any medium. Um, so the further you get along, and when you reread them, you kind of pick up things and you start putting things together. And Volume 4, man, it, the way it left off, and that was another one where I'm very tempted to buy the single issues right now and figure out what's happening. <laughs> but I think I can wait until October-ish when the next volume comes out, but again, so good. Then I read Zodiac Star Force Volume 1 um, by Kevin Panetta. Uh, this one's so good. This is like a modern... Sailor Moon, you know, magical girls doing magical things um, in a modern world with diverse characters. It's it's fantastic. Uh, volume 2 is coming out with a new story arc. Actually, I think it already came out. It came out this month. So I'm excited to get my hands on that. Uh, beautiful artwork. Very colorful. Very bright. Again, very modern in the artwork as, long as, as well as the storyline. Definitely recommend if you're into... Sailor Moon Magical Girl things. Going along with Lock and Key, I did read all of the one shots that are out as well. Definitely added to the whole world that is Lock and Key. Um, there's been hints from the artist and the writer that they're going to come out with more uh, one shots or more stories in the Lock and Key world, especially since. The Netflix show is happening, so that's exciting. Then I picked up Afterlife with Archie. I read volume one a while ago. So I picked up all the single issues that are out through 10. Um, issue 11, I think, is coming out in December, which is awesome because it's the like the last issue for the second story arc. So it's like totally left on a cliffhanger on issue nine. Um, issue 10 and issue six are kind of like kind of one shots but it's still it's but they're not it's just let's see issue six was about Sabrina what happened with Sabrina after issue one and then issue 10 um, brings in Josie and the Pussycats and what they're up to in this world of afterlife with Archie um, so good all five stars 
love the artwork and it, again it's something that just personifies the horror genre um but it is modern and it still has that archy feel but it's it's just so perfect like it's so impressive when comics the artwork and the story just like enhance each other to make the story that much better like it's very impressive yeah okay so that's it now i'm into august wow that i guess it kind of flies by when you lump your comics together so yeah if you can't tell i'm really into comics now i can't stop reading them i've picked up let's see i picked up and put down god's grave i picked up and put down uh golden sun and a couple others just because I just wasn't in the mood like I'm just having a good time with comics and I'm a big mood reader um, I've still read a few novels here and there but yeah I'm having a good time <laughs> so yeah that's what I've read in June and July hi <laughs> what do you want to say um, my books what your books what books have you been reading um, a potty book a potty book what else I read? What else have you been reading? Um, the at library I read out yeah, there. You did read at the library. What else have you read? Um, my other book is dirty. Your other book's dirty? Why is it dirty? Um, my books are clean. Oh, your books are clean? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say? Yeah. What do you want to say? Here's a three little bears. The three little bears? What else, What other book do you read every night? Uh, three or, little pigs. Three little pigs, yeah. Right after read a story, let's just go outside. <laughs> Bye.